Welcome back. Uh, this is the third video in this how to play series for GMT's game Prime Minister. And today we're going to be talking about popular support and elections. And the majority of this is going to have us up in this area of the board where this is all tracked or the information for this is all tracked. We've talked about this briefly earlier, but we're going to go into a lot more detail now. So as we mentioned earlier, popular support is tracked uh, individually for the eight sectors of the ele electorate that you can see on the board here. And each party's popular support within that sector is tracked individually. So you'll have a blue marker tracking where the conservatives are, uh, the conservative party is with that sector, and an orange uh, marker tracking where the liberal party is uh, with that sector. And when there are effects in the game, when you're, you're told to move something up or down on these sectors, it will always reference an individual sector. Nothing in the game is ever universally popular or universally unpopular. So the effects will always uh, happen to, you know, to, to move the pawn uh, within a single sector. And what you can see in these sectors are, and we're gonna start with these beige points uh, here. So you can see them here on, on this track and they're repeated in other tracks. And these represent popular support points. And we'll talk about what they're used for in a second. But this represents your popular support within that sector. And one of the things you can immediately see as you look at this, uh, or a couple of things that you can immediately see as you look at this, is that the number of points you earn by moving up or down a step is variable. It can vary between one and three points. In addition, the number of steps within a sector is variable. So some, some sectors have more steps than others and the uh, maximum and minimums for some sectors are different. So for example, uh, the maximum you can get in terms of popular support for the farmers is 14 and the minimum is one. And by contrast, uh, the maximum you can get for support with, in Scotland is nine, while the minimum is also one. In the conservatives and liberals sector, you can also see that the, the track is actually different depending on which party you are. So you can earn more points uh, you know, by moving up in the liberals sector if you are the liberal party, um, and you can earn less uh, in this sector if you are the conservative party. And these reflect voters who identify as as liberal or conservative. And so while your party can earn some points by appealing to voters who normally vote for the opposing party, it's limited because uh, th these voters aren't really a very receptive to you. The election projections table is where you track one party's lead in popular support. If the parties are tied, then uh, neither the liberal nor the conservative marker will be on this track. And essentially each party will be projected to get 329 seats in parliament. But whenever any party gains or loses popular support points in a sector, you move uh, the marker that is on the election projections table. Now it's really important to note, there will only ever be one marker uh, on this table. So let's say by way of example that, uh, you know, from this state, the liberal party gains two points, uh, gains two, uh, two, two point, two, um, uh, increments in Ireland, which increases their popular support in Ireland from five to nine. In that case, uh, we would, they gain four popular support. So we would place their marker here on the four space. And now, they are projected, the Liberal Party is projected to get 333 votes uh, in the upcoming election. And then let's say that subsequently, the Conservative Party lost a step uh, in uh, support from the gentry, decreasing their popular support by two. We would again move the Liberal uh, token up two spaces. So now it's on the sixth space. And now the Liberal Party is projected to get 340 uh, seat to win 340 seats 
um, in the upcoming election. So, you know, it's important to note that a point loss for one party is a relative gain for the other. Now, I, I said, uh, you know, as I said, there's only ever one uh, marker on this uh, track. So let's say, as an example, that um, this, the marker was here, the Liberal Party was on the one space, and then the Conservative Party gained, let's say they, they gained two steps with the gentry, gaining four support. What we would do in that case is we would, uh, they would represent a relative swing of four. So now the Conservative Party would be here on the three space. Um, and we would move the uh, the liberal marker off the the track. So again, there's only ever one uh, there's only ever one of these markers uh, on the, the this track at any given time. And one thing to just quickly call your attention to is that the number of seats that you are projected to win rises exponentially as you move along this track. And and this reflects the UK's winner take all voting system. Next, let's talk about partisan points. Uh, some of the sectors feature partisan points, which are the numbers that appear in purple. Uh, these determine the number of partisan members of parliament that you will have after an election. And each party in the game uh, gets its partisan points only from particular sectors which traditionally uh, supported them. So, Evidently, the Conservative Party will get partisan points from popular support within the Conservative sector, and the Liberals from will get uh, partisan points from, from support in the Liberal sector. But uh, the Liberals can also earn up to, for example, 70 partisan points for support from workers. In other words, by making a really strong appeal to workers and maxing out support here, districts that are heavy in workers will elect uh, members of parliament who will support the more partisan liberal bills, which we've already talked about when we were talking about bills. Now, by contrast, conservatives can't get any partisan points in this sector because uh, those workers who favor conservatives tend to want moderate conservatives. And as you can see, the completely ideological sectors like the conservatives and the liberals award the most uh, partisan points. And some sectors such as the middle class in Scotland don't offer any at all. The presence of these partisan points in the sectors is a good clue as to which uh, party that sector traditionally supports. For example, uh, the farmers traditionally uh, support the Conservative Party and don't tend to like the Liberal agenda. So it's hard for the Liberal Party to hold this sector. And one of the reasons it's hard to hold this sector is that Liberal bills tend to upset farmers. So if we take a look, for example, at the Importation Act from the Liberal Bills Deck, you can see that if the uh, Liberal Party passes this bill, their support with farmers is going to plummet by three, and it's going to go up by two with the Conservative Party. So it's something to think about when you're deciding what sectors you want to invest in. You know, if the Liberal Party seeks support from the farmers, they're in effect uh, promising the farmers moderate policies and the farmers might get angry if you pivot to the partisan liberal agenda in an attempt to get ahead on the VP track. Now, important to note, partisan points are not good or bad. It, it depends on your strategy, and that strategy can often be different in different phases of the, of the game. At this point in the game, is your intent to enact moderate bills? If so, then you probably want to try to avoid partisan points. Or are you in a phase of the game where you're trying to enact uh, party bills in an attempt to move ahead on the, the victory point track? Well, then you wanna gain partisan points. So thinking about, and we've talked about this before, but thinking about that mix between partisan and moderates is a key part of your strategy in the game. There are many ways to change popular support. What you're going to generally be looking for is the up and down arrows on components, and this is shown on the iconography and player aid. Um, and we've already seen examples of this when we talked about the effects of certain bills. The uh, Campaign Politician Act is another way that you can affect popular support. Politicians who are capable of the campaign action will have 
three different sectors listed. And when you take the action, you can choose which of these sectors you want to affect. So for example, uh, if Benjamin Disraeli is taking this action, he can uh, choose to move uh, popular support in the conservative, middle class, or worker sector the Earl of Rosebery in the gentry, liberal, or Scotland sector, and the Earl of Aberdeen in the conservative, gentry, or Scotland sector. Supporters are another way that you can affect uh, popular support in a sector. Lord George Bentinck here, who we previously uh, used in an example uh, for his ability to increase or decrease support for a bill, could alternately be used to decrease support popular support amongst the farmers. That's indicated by the down arrow and the F. Now the hand here, and again, all of this is covered on the player aid really well, but the hand here means that you can choose whether you want to affect uh, your party or the opposition party. So that means that you get to choose. You could make your opponent move down or you could make yourself move down in that uh, sector. Uh, the Duke of Argyle, you could choose to increase support in Scotland or William Howley could be used either to drop uh, support amongst the gentry for either of the parties or to increase your support amongst conservatives. Finally, there are event cards uh, that can have effects on popular support. And we haven't covered event cards yet, so we'll only talk about this briefly, but uh, when the prime minister has to resolve an event card, Often that event card will come with, depending on what choice they make, it will come with an effect to popular support within a sector. So in the case of the coal mine disaster, they can choose to ignore it, in which case their support will go down by two with the workers. They could spend one cube and consult the home secretary, in which case they would mitigate the damage somewhat and only go down by one. Or they could spend two cubes and visit their survivors, in which case their support would go up by one. Another example of this would be crop failure, uh, which will affect support for, for farmers or, or the uh, boars winning a battle in South Africa. A critical part of strategy in the game is that the tracks have minimums and maximums. And if you decrease support when you're already at the minimum, it has no further effect. Or when if you increase support when you're at the maximum, it has no further effect. So. If, for example, you were a conservative uh, prime minister and you were resolving the coal mine disaster and your support with the workers was already at the minimum, you could easily choose to completely ignore the coal mine disaster because the decrease in support with the workers wouldn't have any effect. Similarly, if you are the uh, if you are a liberal prime minister and your support with the um, with the farmers is at its minimum, you could ignore crop failure. Or if you were a liberal PM and uh, you were dealing with this event, you could choose the the middle action if your support with the conservatives was already at the minimum. So. This is one of the reasons that it can be advantageous to write off uh, certain sectors of the electorate and just leave your support at the minimum value in that sector. Having covered uh, popular support, now let's talk about elections. And we talked about how popular support leads to tracking the projected outcome of an election. So now let's see how you actually conduct an election in the game. And the player aid contains an entire side which runs you through the entire process of running an election. So that's gonna be an invaluable resource when you're playing the game. But let's start with when do you hold an election? If there are no bills left on the board at the end of a player round, the PM has to choose. So there is an election marker in the game. It's this marker and it sits right there. If you reach the election phase and there are no bills on the board, if this marker is in the space, the PM can either choose to postpone the election, in which case they take this marker and they move it off the space, they put it here, and then you just proceed to the next turn. You've basically said, we're not gonna have the election right now, you're postponing it. If you reach this state and the marker is not in this space, uh, then you are automatically have to hold the election. So you can only postpone an election uh, once. Now, if the marker is in the space and for some reason you feel like it's advantageous to hold the election, you can also choose to hold the election while the marker is in the space. That choice is available to you whenever this marker is in this space. I will note that um, 
You can't postpone an election when the prime minister has 85 victory points or more. There's an end game restriction um, and that's noted here on the score track. When presented with the choice of whether to postpone or hold an election, you have to think about both the current projection for the election, uh, where, what marker is here, who's projected to win the election and by how much, but you also wanna think about uh, the mix of moderates and partisans in the popular support sectors. So the mix of moderates and partisans in your party may change after the election, and you have to ask yourself whether you want that to change at this moment. Now let's walk through the election process itself. It starts with the election projection. So as we last left things, the Conservative Party had uh, three more popular support than the Liberals, and so they were projected to win 333 uh, seats in Parliament in this election. Now we draw an uncertainty card, and you'll remember these from when we we're talking about resolving bills. But in this case, we're going to look at the bottom half of the card, and the bottom half of the card is going to inf in is going to impact the total of the party which is projected to win the election. So it's going to get added or subtracted from that total. So, uh, for example, if we drew this card, we would add four to the 333 seats that the Conservative Party is projected to win. And in fact, the outcome of this election would be that the Conservative Party wins 337 seats. It's possible for these to entirely swing an election. If we drew this card, by, uh, by contrast, you would subtract 12 from the amount that the, the uh, Conservative Party is projected to win. So instead of getting 333 seats, the Conservative Party would only get 321 seats, which means that the Liberal Party in this case would be the ones who would be getting 337 seats and winning this election. Quick note, if the parties are tied, the, uh, the party leader with the most favor with Queen Victoria uh, wins the election. But Queen Victoria can have an even more direct effect on the election than that. Certain uncertainty cards contain this icon, which is the royal interference icon. And it represents Queen Victoria stepping in to make her personal favorite party leader the prime minister. And this is one of the ways that you can end up with a minority government in the game. So if you draw a card with the, the royal interference icon in it, the party leader whose party is gonna lose that election, they can choose to accept the offer and become prime minister if they have more favor than the other party leader and their, that party earned at least the number of members of parliament indicated on the card. So let's say in this example, we had drawn this card. So the first thing is that the uncertainty result is plus two. So the election results, which started here would shift and the conservative party would be getting 335 seats and the Liberal Party would only be getting 323 seats. But the Liberal Party leader is ahead on the favor track, as you can see here, and the number of seats that they are projected to win is 323 or greater. So in this case, that player could choose to become the Prime Minister of a minority government. Now there's a couple of sort of special rules to be aware of that happen when an election is triggered uh, because of a challenge. But since we haven't covered challenges yet, we're gonna cover them in the next video. Um, I'll just mention that you should look for those uh, rules uh, in, the, in the official rules. So what happens after an election? Well, the first thing is that the party that gained seats is going to earn some victory points. And this is completely independent of who won or lost the election the party that gained seats gains victory points. They get two victory points for gaining seats, plus they get one additional victory point for each 10 seats gained. So as an example, um, if the prime minister's party started with 380 uh, members of parliament and they won the election with uh, 350 members of parliament, the opposition party would score five VPs, two for picking up seats, plus three because they picked up 30 seats. 
The other potential outcome of an election is a government changeover. So elections are one of two ways that control of government can change from uh, party to party. The other is challenges, which we're gonna cover in the next video. If the party that was in control of government loses the election, you have a government changeover. And what that means is that the opposition leader is now the prime minister and the prime minister is now the opposition leader and the parties switch roles. So the party me that was in control of government is now the opposition and the party that was the opposition is now in control of government. The incoming prime minister gains six victory points for their party uh, for becoming prime minister. And the party leaders are going to exchange mats. So in the physical game, you would literally hand the prime minister mat to, to the other player and vice versa. Within uh, tabletop, you might just switch which mat you're, you're using uh, without moving them around. Um, and when that happens, the standing for the, uh, the the player gets set to the default for that uh, for that role. So the prime minister's uh, standing gets set to 11 and the opposition leader's standing gets set to five. The backbenchers by contrast, flip their mats over. So the government backbencher would become the opposition backbencher and the opposition backbencher would become the government backbencher. And in the physical game, you, you flip the mats over and the player's standing remains where it was. So if my standing was three, when I flip it over, my standing remains three. Due to a quirk in tabletop, uh, you actually change states. So you go to the state menu and you switch from state one to state two, or you can just hover over it and press one or two to get which state you need. That's just due to a quirk in tabletop. But essentially you're flipping the mat over. So the government backbencher now becomes the opposition backbencher and the opposition backbencher becomes the government backbencher. Now you can see there's a bunch of cards here, which we haven't covered them yet. We haven't covered what they are or what they do, but when government changes, uh, in addition to flipping the mat, the opposition backbencher would give the opposition cards to the government backbencher, and they would give the government cards to the opposition backbencher, so they would, they would just switch which cards they were using in addition to switching which side of the mat they were using. As a reminder, when there's a government changeover, the party deck that you can draw from would change. So if the liberals were going into the opposition and the conservatives were taking over control of government, uh, you would then draw from the conservative bill deck, not the liberal bill deck. Then we reset the government member of parliament tracker, the government MPs tracker. So in our example election, the Conservative Party won 337 seats. So that is rounded to the nearest 10. So that would, go, that would mean that they have 340 members of parliament. And then we're going to check the, the uh, popular support tracks to see how many partisans they have. So looking at the situation, um, they have 80 partisans coming from the conservative sector and they have 10 partisans coming from the farmers. So that means that they have a total of 90 partisan members of parliament. So that gets reflected here by putting the marker on the 90 space for the partisans. And so moderates are simply total members of parliament or all members of parli parliament minus the partisans. So moderates would get set to 250. And finally, if it's not in its space, you replace the election mark marker, which means that the next election can possibly be postponed. To close out this video, let's talk about by-elections. And by-elections uh, cards are found in the event deck. And we haven't talked about the event deck yet, but for purposes of this, just know that every turn, the prime minister is going to turn up an event card and have to resolve it. And sometimes that's going to be a by-election card. When these come up, you compare the total number of MPs in the government to the current election projections. If the prime minister's party is projected to lose members of parliament after rounding off the election projections, uh, then that party loses the by-election. So let's say that for, for this purpose, the conservatives are in power, they have 340 members of parliament, and the current election projection is 
on this space. So the Liberals are projected to win 333 seats. That is rounded off to 330. But 330 seats for the Liberal Party represents a, a loss of members of parliament for the government. So in that case, the Conservatives and the Prime, Minister, Prime Minister's Party loses the by-election. When that happens, you simply refer to the card and implement the effects. Um, and there are two flavors of this. In one case, uh, the opposition leader will gain one standing and one victory point. And in the other case, the prime minister will lose one standing and the opposition party will gain one victory point. There's no effect if you win the by-election. And regardless, you don't move the MP tracker at all. The, the actual effects of, of a by-election are too small to track in the game. Uh, it just represents a, a loss of standing or gain in standing or and a victory point for the opposition party if they win a by-election. For the opposition, uh, one strategy is to try to keep the election projections below the current number of members of parliament, total members of parliament, in case a by-election comes up because this can be a good way to change standing between the opposition leader and PMs, which could allow for a challenge which is something that we're gonna cover in the next video. Hopefully now you feel like you have a good grasp on popular support and elections in Prime Minister and are moving nicely towards being able to play the game. Uh, I appreciate your time. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, you know, it'd be great if you could, you know, take all the actions, uh, subscribe, share, comment, like, all of those things. And we'll be back next time with a video in which we're gonna look at the politics within the game.